The beautiful thing about natural bond orbital theory is that every natural bond orbital corresponds to a visible element of the Lewis structure of the molecule. This means that we can infer the orbital structure of the molecule from its Lewis structure, and using considerations of the energetics of the orbitals and their spatial positions, we can identify important orbital interactions within molecules which are related to resonance, and how a molecule's orbitals are likely to overlap with other molecules in organic reactions. In this video, we're going to survey the natural bond orbitals and see how they relate to specific elements within Lewis structures. Let's start with the electron sources. The first is the non-bonding lone pair. The non-bonding lone pair typically has the appearance of a hybrid, as shown here, but it can also have the appearance of an atomic 2p orbital. And we can identify a non-bonding lone pair orbital within a Lewis structure by looking for a pair of electrons on an atom like this within the Lewis structure. On the right, we see the Lewis structure of NF3, and on the left, we see the corresponding non-bonding lone pair orbital. For every non-bonding lone pair like this in any molecule, we can visualize a localized molecular orbital that looks like this that houses the lone pair. Every pi bond is associated with a pi bonding orbital, and we can see that this is constructed from the side-on overlap of two adjacent p orbitals. Every double or triple bond within a Lewis structure is associated with one or two pi bonding orbitals corresponding to the second and third bonds of the double and triple bond. Every single bond within Lewis structures corresponds to a sigma bonding orbital, and we can see that this is constructed through the overlap of two hybrids, as shown here, or as we saw in the last video, from the overlap of a hybrid with an atomic orbital. It's worth paying attention to these little nubs of opposite phase on the backside of the sigma bonding orbital. Every time we see a single bond within a Lewis structure, we should visualize this sigma bonding orbital between the pair of bonded atoms. Notice that the Lewis structural elements on the right correspond to the electron sources we've already talked about. These are places where electrons reside within Lewis structures. We can think of the orbitals as electron sources as well. And thinking about the orbitals rather than just the Lewis structural elements gives us insight into, for example, how reactions occur spatially or how electrons flow. We'll talk more about this in later discussions of the elementary steps of organic reaction mechanisms. We can also associate empty or anti-bonding natural bond orbitals with specific elements of Lewis structures. The A electron sink, which is associated with the six electron building block, has the appearance of an empty 2p atomic orbital on the six electron building block, and this is consistent with sp2 hybridization at the building block. Anytime we see a six electron building block with trigonal planar geometry like this, we should visualize the empty 2p or A natural bond orbital. For each bonding combination, we also have an anti-bonding combination that represents an empty natural bond orbital. For example, if we combine the 2p orbitals in a subtractive way, such that the signs of the adjacent p orbitals are opposite, we end up with the pi antibond. And we should associate double and triple bonds within Lewis structures with both pi bonds and pi antibonds, since the pi bond can either donate or accept electrons. Every single bond is associated with both a bonding and an antibonding combination. And just as the pi antibond is constructed from two p orbitals of opposite phase, the sigma antibond is constructed from the overlap of two hybrids of opposite phase. To generate the shape, we subtract the hybrid on one atom from the hybrid on another. This results in a node between the nuclei. In fact, we see that in the pi antibonding case as well. And an important thing to notice about the sigma antibonding case is that now, what was a little nub on the outside of the bonding orbital is a very large lobe in the sigma antibonding orbital. The most important lobes within this orbital are often outside of the bond. This has important implications for the geometry of reactions involving sigma antibonds, as we'll see later. To close this video, I want to emphasize that these shapes are wholly general. We're going to deepen this system in two ways in the next video, but every time you see, for example, a single bond within a Lewis structure, you should visualize sigma bonding and sigma antibonding orbitals. Every time you see a double or triple bond, you should visualize pi bonding and antibonding orbitals, so on and so forth. Taking these steps to visualize these orbitals will help you start to see the deeper structure of organic molecules. In the next video, we're going to extend this system by talking about the relative energies 
of the six natural bond orbitals shown here, and what happens when the two atoms in a bond have very different electronegativities, resulting in polarization. Polarization has effects on the orbital shape that are fairly intuitive that we'll discuss in the next video.